Uh, tear down time. Uh, this is a solar ornament. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers was tearing one down uh, recently. I'll just put the link to his video uh, in the description. Uh, BigClive.com was taking a look at it. Uh, and he got to the point in his video where he showed that the, most of the circuitry is hidden under uh, a black epoxy blob called a chip on board. And that kind of piqued my interest. I was wondering whether or not that was just simply a repurposed uh, component from a clock or uh, if it was actually a custom semiconductor for this particular function. Maybe they sell enough flappy flowers in this world to justify a custom design. So in this video, uh, we're going to take uh, that blocked epoxy blob off and we're going to analyze the integrated circuit that lies beneath. So the arrangement of this one has a magnet on the flower, the voice coil here, and then the circuit board with the solar cell, the capacitor, and most importantly, the uh, the small chip on board blob. So this is the uh, semiconductor once it's removed from its packaging. Let's uh, go to the very top left of the die. We're going to analyze the circuitry uh, up here. Okay, so this is the uh, clocking circuit for this uh, semiconductor. There's no crystal on the board because it's too expensive. The oscillator is basically contained on the die. And this uh, golden area is a capacitor. And then down here we get a series of gates. Uh, this is just one of the pads for the device, so it's not part of the clock of circuit, it's this L-shaped portion that's in gold. Um, anyways, wide capacitor. Well, everything's built around this equation, of VC equals Vn times in this formula. Um, it's basically the formula for charging a capacitor. If you uh, were to take a, a voltage source, a uh, positive voltage source, and then construct a resistor and a capacitor, the real classic circuit. Uh, and if you have a positive voltage here, uh, what will happen is uh, the capacitor will charge from zero volts in an exponential fashion. And uh, then if you were to say, uh, switch this to ground somehow, break the connection, uh, it'll decay in an exponential fashion as well. And of course, if you repeat this, you'd end up with a, you know, a very precise, uh, a very repeatable uh, array of pulses because the only thing that changes here, like R is constant, C is constant, uh, the V is constant, only time. So. Basically, you can uh, create a, a reliable uh, clock. And uh, if you're going to do this, uh, say, on a circuit board, you would uh, you would have your uh, capacitor here. Uh, you would then uh, have your resistor here. And you'd probably pick up an element called a, a Schmidt trigger gate. And uh, what it does is uh, provides that little switching function between positive and uh, negative. Uh, for example, if the, uh, if the output of the Schmidt trigger starts out uh, high, uh, it'll start to charge the capacitor and then it's going to reach a point on the input side called a v input high and what it'll do is this the gate will sense that then it'll, it'll change its state to drive this one it gets, so as it gets higher and then this will come to zero it'll snap and down it'll come and uh, the pattern repeats itself as soon as it gets into v input low uh, you get uh, the schmitter going back and forth back and forth no, Schmidt trigger very realistic to fabricate on a semiconductor. Uh, the capacitor very realistic. However, uh, the resistor not so much. Uh, the kind of resistance you would need for this circuit to work properly would probably take like, one quarter, even one half the die. Resistors are very hard to do in semiconductors. Let's take a look at how they actually do it. So to sort down how you can replace resistor, uh, here's a master's thesis. It's got a couple of good diagrams in it. Actually, a really good read as well. Analysis and design of a high frequency RC oscillator suitable for mass production. I'll uh, throw a link uh, to this particular thesis in the description of the video if you'd like to read it. Uh, but let's take a look at these two figures here. Uh, this figure here is quite interesting because you can see these uh, two constant current sources and two switches. So rather than a resistor, you basically have a constant current source. A switch closes, capacitor charges, then of course, uh, shown here is op amps, but same thing as a Schmidt trigger. You reach a threshold voltage, the flip-flop flips, opens this switch and closes this switch. Now, these constant current sources inevitably look uh, something like this, about four transistors. And what's happening is you're basically biasing a transistor for a constant amount of current. And from there, of course, uh, replacing that resistor with a, a very small topology. Uh, and that's how, of course, you can achieve uh, a reasonably priced oscillator. Okay, so coming up to the whole chip, uh, we sort of established that this block here is driving a clock into the rest of the logic. And the first thing you notice is logic right below the uh, clock generator uh, it repeats. and uh, that's about a flip-flop's worth of logic. So what we're probably looking at is a uh, counter, which makes sense. A, a flappy flower obviously moves uh, very slow. So you need to get a control signal down into sort of the hertz range for it to be useful for this product. So basically what we have here is, you know, hundreds of kilohertz, perhaps a megahertz coming in, gets divided down in a binary pattern, and then it produces that one hertz or so clock that goes into the rest of the assembly. Now to uh, sort down what we're looking at in this area, it's, it's obviously more uh, digital logic all through it here, big 
uh, digital logic area. But there's something that's really interesting. Uh, it's actually where I'm just circling right now. Uh, it is almost certainly what's known as a state table. If you look closely, you can see a series of uh, what looks like, like binary dots and dashes. Let's uh, just uh, change the picture to the zoom in of that area to get a better sense of what we're looking at. Now, what you're looking at is either uh, a one or a zero programmed on a bit line. So that will be a one, perhaps, or a zero, depending on the, the state of the logic. And you can sort of see they're sort of arranged in, in rows. And uh, if you look at my teardown video and program logic, you'll see the structure. It's basically an AND structure. So these, this thing will be this this variable and this variable and this variable. And it'll, it'll come across and it'll create a, a logic term. And that logic term will go up uh, into a, a state machine. Let me just uh, go to another picture if you're not familiar with state machines. Uh, they're really useful uh, digital logic devices. When you're not doing a, a, a processor, a state machine is the way to go. Basically, you have uh, a bunch of flip-flops. Here, probably, it's going to be like five or six flip-flops. And like one of the outputs will be uh, you know, a pulse of the motor. And the input, for example, will be uh, reading whether or not current's been induced in that coil, because that's how uh, the flower understands whether or not it's in the right resident mode. And then what happens is that you encode your logic here. This is that, that, that table that we're looking at. Uh, this here is uh, basically this uh, area in, in the die here. And uh, if you go further, you can actually encode, uh, you can figure out what's going on. Now, the reason why the designers did this is it gets really, really easy. So, for example, like this, this bit line here could well be the pulse of the motor, and this one could be read the, read the, um, the coil coming back. And you can get constructs like, um, the first thing it's going to do is wake up, of course, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll pulse the flower, and then it's going to wait, and, and then it'll have like an input that's to make the please check. And if the input's good, it'll, it'll, it'll pulse the motor. It might even do this just pulse, 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 pulse. And then it does a logical check, and then it'll have, you can create things like conditional loops and such not. So uh, you can create a, a relatively complicated structure using only a few dozen flip-flops. Uh, a very appropriate technique for what's going on uh, in this uh, integrated circuit. And that, of course, brings us to our next topic. Uh, there's four pads on the, uh, the die. You can clearly see this one here, for example, is power. And I know that because you look here next to the pad, a large number of via stitching structures you've got to carry current, and each via can't carry much current. Then, of course, you come down here, you see the same thing. Like, oh, boy, right? There it is. And uh, here's another power pad. So this one could well be ground. This one could well be plus V. And uh, what else do we got here? Then, of course, you might think, well, this one's, one's the coil. This one just drives the coil. Uh, but uh, that's actually not likely. What you really want is you want the, uh, the, the battery coming in. Uh, pardon me, the solar cell coming in. And so it'll have, of course, uh, a ground. And then the coil comes into here. And we just draw the coil kind of crudely. And uh, it doesn't have to go anywhere but to the ground. So this will be ground here. And what happens, why you want a fourth input is you basically want to sense the current that's flowing through the coil. So uh, you may well attach it here or uh, somewhere on the assembly so you can figure out how much current is flowing through the assembly. Because what happens, you push the, uh, the current into the coil, then of course that hopefully should uh, cause it to uh, repulse from the magnet. And then as the, uh, the uh, coil swings back over the magnet, a uh, voltage gets reinduced. And that has to come back into the assembly. And that's how this thing can then tell whether or not it hit the resident mode. Uh, we have um, a large uh, structure here. Uh, I believe that's probably going to be the voltage regulator. Uh, you, you know, obviously, solar cell produces a pretty unreliable voltage. So you have some sort of regulation there. Uh, then you got, of course, got the FET here. Uh, that would actually be the one that pushed the coil, uh, the current through the coil. Uh, or perhaps uh, vice versa. You have to really sort these things down but you get that sort of thing here. Uh, and then there's some analog functions in here, and I expect one of them is actually the sensing wheel, sensing whether or not uh, the, uh, the little flowers run into a uh, resonant mode. So there you go. There's no question this particular semiconductor was uh, designed uh, for this one particular function. So there must well be indeed a huge market out there for floppy flowers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I have my pictures of this die if you want to take a little bit of a further study on electronupdate.blogspot.com as always. Links in my video if you want to look, uh, look for that link there as well. And I look forward to seeing you on my next uh, teardown video.